I'm Bianca. And I'm Grant. And, and this, this is, is the Lake House Project. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Lake House Project. Just want to catch everyone up to speed. So here's where our starting point was for the kitchen, living room, and dining room. And we started with demolition by first taking out the spiral staircase. Then we moved on to demoing the kitchen by removing all of the cabinets as we're going to start from scratch here. We then moved on to the tile floor and tore out about 500 square feet of tile flooring along with the cement board underneath. We then tore out the carpet in the living room and the laminate wood flooring in the dining room. After demo was complete, we moved on to raising up the floor. We did this by installing 2x6s across the entire sunken floor so that the whole first floor is now one level. And after those were fully installed, we came back with some subfloor, specifically Advantech plywood, and we screwed and glued all this to make now one solid floor all the way across. And now we are currently ready to install the Duroc, so let's get started. I had all of the materials delivered directly to my house from Home Depot. This includes all of the Duroc, the mortar, all of the accoutrements, including a paddle bit as well as a ton of buckets. All right, so before we put on all of the cement board over this floor, uh, we need to fill in all these holes. This, I'm not even sure what this was drilled for. This was done previously. There wasn't even anything going through it when we discovered it, but we just put a two by six underneath as blocking and then cut this to the right size and then this kind of just slides in there, screw this in, and then we can put the cement board directly over it. Then if someone steps here, there's perfectly amount of support that they're not gonna fall through the floor or anything. We did the same process here for a old floor vent that was underneath the kitchen cabinets. Then it was on to measuring and cutting all of the Duroc. Here you can just use a measuring tape and a Sharpie to mark your measurement and then a scrap piece of wood as a straight edge to use a utility knife to kind of score the cement board. Once you do that, you can flip it over and kind of break it along that seam and then score it again on the other side. After bending it a few times back and forth, you'll eventually break the mesh on the inside and you have two pieces. You may have some difficult cutouts to go around. Here we had a floor vent that I had to measure and mark out that was on the inside of a board. But here we're just using the same process, but the key is cutting it and scoring it on both sides of the board. Uh, and then you can just use a hammer or whatever tools you have to finish the cut. We then laid each board down and made sure to do so in a staggered formation. And this is so that you can prevent cracking later down the line. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can now, when we put our tile in, just slide it all the way up against the drywall and it'll look very nice up against this edge. And it'll save us time because we, when we cut the tile, we can just leave it straight instead of having to cut a zigzag around this stuff. So it takes some time now, but it'll save more time later. All right, so now we have all of this first row completed. Everything's cut, uh, all the vents are cut out. We cut it on the fireplace. And so now none of its mortar is just laying down. And then we did that because the mortar might dry out if we try and uh, do all the cuts while we do the mortar. So we did this ahead of time so we can just pull these sheets off, put the mortar down and put the sheets directly back and we're good to go without any cutting or anything because we know everything already fits. But before we pull everything off, I'm gonna go around the perimeter with a Sharpie and just kind of outline this formation. That way when we put the mortar on, it's a lot easier to know where to put it instead of putting the, a bunch of excess in a spot where we don't need it. And it's also helpful to align the boards back to where we want them. Let's do it. So we're about to mix up the mortar. We're gonna use some of these bottles here to measure out the correct amount of water, which is around five and a quarter liters. Um, so we're gonna put that in the bucket, then put in our mortar mix, mix it up with the drill here. Hopefully this is powerful enough, we'll see. And then from there, get it to a peanut butter consistency and then start laying down the mortar and screwing in the cement board. If you have a measuring cup, you can use that, but here we just use some leftover bottles to get the correct amount of water in the bucket. And you always wanna start with a little bit less water than you think, because you can always add more, but you can't take it out. Then we kind of made the mistake of emptying the entire bag into the bucket and we used an underpowered drill 
and all of a sudden this happened. Oh my god. It's overheating, yeah. If you are going to use a hand drill to mix your mortar, you're definitely going to want to add it slowly over time as opposed to the whole bag at once. Uh, but we found a workaround by just using a wooden post. You do what you can in these situations. Then it was time to start installing the Duroc. I used a trowel specified by this specific mortar mix and I made sure to follow my sharpie line which was very helpful. And then once the mortar was ready, me and my dad lifted each piece of Duroc into position, making sure to leave about an eighth inch gap between each piece uh, for expansion and contraction. Once that was ready, we kind of stepped on it to sink it into position and my dad went through and screwed, it in, screwed in specific Duroc screws uh, about every eight inches to make sure they were fully secured. Then it was time for round two of mixing up the mortar and here we definitely learned our lesson. We started with all of the water but only half of the mortar and then we went and bought a specific paddle mixer designed for mixing up mortar and things like grout and this was a well worth purchase. I'll link it down below. If you have a project similar to this I definitely recommend buying one. A pro tip I wanted to mention is that as you lay each sheet of Duroc and screw it in you want to go back and wipe away the excess around the perimeter as that could dry and then when you go to lay your next sheet that might get in the way so you want to wipe that while it's still wet. And if you're enjoying the video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like. It definitely helps us out with the YouTube algorithm and gain a bigger audience. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We post a brand new DIY video every single Saturday about progress on this lake house. So subscribe to stay tuned and see all the updates. Okay, so this subfloor was a bit beat up, so we decided to replace it. And so as we cut it, we realized that these joints are overlapping like this. And so we had to cut it on a bit of an angle, but in order for us to add some support, we're probably going to add a block here on this side, and then nail another block in here on this side to give the new uh, subfloor piece a bit more support, and so it can be a bit more stable, and then we'll continue with the Duroc. And when you're doing large sheets and large spaces, you don't really need to pre-cut. However, for this hallway and around this wall, we decided to pre-cut everything and lay it in place without mortar to make sure we had all the pieces ready to go. And then we mix up the mortar so that we could speed up our time of install and make sure the mortar didn't dry out before we finished. And there really isn't a trick to doing the mortar. However, I'll show you the way I like to do it. I usually get a couple of globs out of the bucket to cover about half of a, of a sheet of Duroc. Then I use the flat side of the trowel to spread it out to an even thickness. Then I come back with a notch side and get all the notches. And then I just kind of work my way across uh, toward the wall. And then once I have the whole thing done, we come in with our sheet, put it into position, step on it to kind of push it in and collapse all those ridges. And then my dad comes back to screw it all in. And as we're nearing the end, I just had to make a few more cuts on this cedar to make sure the tile could properly slide under. They do make blades for power tools to cut through this cement board, however it creates a lot of dust, so I definitely prefer the utility knife over those. And as I satisfyingly spread out this mortar, I just wanted to mention that we also have a TikTok and Instagram if you want to follow along for more real-time updates. And as I mentioned earlier, after you lay your piece of Duroc, you want to scrape up all the excess so that way it doesn't dry and block you from putting in your next piece. Another tip is after you lay your piece of Duroc down and before you screw it in, you can use your foot to kind of kick it around and make sure you have a nice perimeter of an eighth inch gap surrounding the board. Then I like to screw in each of the four corners to lock it in, and then you can come back and screw in all of these screws in between. Then, once all your Duroc is installed, you can begin installing the adhesive mesh tape which goes along all of the seams which helps to prevent cracking down the line. After the tape is adhered, you come back with some of that same mortar you used to lay the Duroc and put it over top of the tape to lock it into position. If you've got a team behind you, this process can go actually very quickly. I had my mom in charge of cutting all of the tape to the right length, and then Bianca and my dad would then tape all of the seams and I would come behind them with the mortar. And here you can see them taping the long seams and it's best to do this with one piece of tape to prevent cracking.
All right, so that completes the Duroc install. Covered about 800 square feet and we left this little space here for the staircase. We'll install that little strip once the staircase is in. Uh, but we are able to cover pretty much 95% of the place. Uh, we mortared and screwed it in as you saw and then we taped the seams and mudded all the seams and it's now the next day. Uh, so everything is dry and ready to go and now we can start tiling. And that episode will most likely come out next week so subscribe and stay tuned for that. If you have any questions about this process or anything that you think we should have done differently, please leave them in the comments below and we'd be happy to answer and address those comments and like the video if you enjoyed it. See you next week. As I mentioned, next week we got the tile install. It was quite the undertaking as I've never done tile of this amount of square footage before, so it was a challenge but a lot of fun. Anyway, thanks for watching and happy building. See you next week.